if you, as, as a leader or manager, um, know that you tend to get defensive, perhaps, like what are some strategies for, for yourself so you can actually appreciate the feedback or you can actually hear it even in the moment? Yeah. So I, when I work with clients or teams on this, one of the first things we do is we, we take a little time to First of all, normalize defensiveness, right? So negative feedback can absolutely feel like an attack on your character, right? Uh, and there's actually two kinds of negative feedback. There is confirming and disconfirming feedback. So confirming feedback is negative feedback, and we'll call it negative or constructive feedback. Confirming feedback is feedback I'm getting on something that I know I'm, I need to work on. Uh, And that can be hard if I'm like, I'm working on it. And it can also be really hard to get disconfirming feedback. So feedback around something where you thought you were doing a really good job and you get the feedback that you're not, right? So it's helpful to know a little bit about that and to normalize the fact that feedback can feel like an attack on us. And when we get attacked, we defend ourselves. That's very normal. It's important to figure out what value or need of yours is feeling under threat. And there's a whole range of things. We don't, we don't have enough time today, but you know, when you give me a piece of negative feedback, does it threaten my sense of status? Does it threaten my sense of autonomy? Does it threaten my sense of like, are we okay with each other? Right? So it's important for me. So I know for myself that when I get negative feedback or constructive feedback, I tend to react less well to feedback that feels like a threat to my autonomy. I mean, I've been my own boss for 17 years. So any feedback where I'm thinking, oh, are they going to need me to like to turn in my work in advance? And are we going to have to have run throughs of this leadership development program? That feedback, I am not going to react well to. Although feedback that's about, you know, somebody's a little frustrated with me. I have enough faith in my relationship repair skills that that's not going to send me off. Yeah. So number one, understand, right, what triggers you. Number two is recognize how it shows up. So I'm somebody that when I get negative feedback, I am going to tend to dwell on it for a while uh, and probably probably dramatize it, you know, sort of catastrophize around it. But other people shut down in the face of feedback. I work with a lot of law firms and um, when their lawyers and associates get, get uh, feedback, they defend themselves, right? And so, and it's funny because I'll often be asked by the leadership team that brought me in that said, you know, they're, they're fighting every little piece of the feedback. They're nitpicking each little piece. I said, yeah, they're lawyers. This is what you hired them to do. They're, they're showing up as who they are. So of course they're going to nitpick and defend every part. So it's also helpful to know what your go-to defense strategy is. And then number one, recognize that you're having a defensive reaction. Number two, name it um, and name it with a little bit of distance, right? So as opposed to I'm dwelling, I would name it with a little bit of distance, which is I notice that I'm starting to dwell. So just a little bit of separation from myself. I notice that I'm starting to dwell. Recognize why your defensive response has been triggered. Oh, my sense of autonomy is being threatened. Somebody's going to review my work and tell me what to do. Gross. And then I got to come up with something more helpful. And there are lots of ways to take feedback in a way that's more helpful than defending yourself, which could be really listen right? To really commit to saying, tell me more, help me understand that. To ask questions that help you understand where this is coming from, where this is going to. I really suggest that people adopt a growth mindset. So the belief that I have things to learn and I can grow and I may not be there, but I'm, I will get there one day. I'm just not there yet. And to very much stop yourself from snowballing, right? This is one piece of feedback even if delivered poorly, it is likely not about your character. It's about hopefully your performance or your task. And um, don't make this the biggest deal in the world. Yeah. So I'm going to ask one more question and then yeah. I'm starting to see things in the chat. So you were talking about the lawyers and their need to defend themselves and, and you know, and committing to listening, right? And accepting the feedback. Um, but what if you don't agree with the feedback, right? So like, let's say that, you you have listened and um and you just you know no no disrespect to the person but you just think that they're wrong or 
you know, perhaps that they're, they're asking for something that's not realistic or whatever it is, but, but what, what do you do then? Do you, do you, yeah. do you tell them, is there some other like response that, so that doesn't shut down the conversation? Yeah. Too? So, yeah. so much of it depends, right? So, so much of it depends on the relationship that you have with the feedback provider. So much of it depends on the power differential, right? In the organization. So much of it depends on whether this is really a request or sort of a command, right? Like something, the difference between something for you to consider to be more effective would be which versus like, you have to start doing X and stop doing Y, right? So all of those things factor in. Um, if it's feedback that you disagree with and you feel like you've got, you know, a little little bit wiggle room. Obviously, I would ask for specific examples and clarifications to help you understand what they're seeing that you may not be seeing. Definitely acknowledge that your boss may have a completely different perspective than you do. Um, some other things to think about is to see if you can find any kind of common ground, right? So one of the things to, to do is to take a step back and, and to say, so let's see if there's something we do agree on. One of the things I think we both agree on is we want, uh, we want our customer to be satisfied and successful. Do we both agree on that? Yes. Sounds like we have some disagreement on the how. Can we negotiate that even if we have agreement on the what? Uh, one of my favorite guidelines is what I call the 2% true rule. And I say I call it that. I'm quite sure I picked it up from somebody else. I didn't invent it. And the 2% true rule is if you had, if you're hearing something that doesn't resonate for you, if you could commit to... 2% of this is true, but I get to pick any 2% I want. What would the 2% of that be? And it gives you a little bit of movement towards, I may not respect this person. I may really disagree with what they're saying, but if I had to commit that there's 2% truth in here, what would it be? And see if you can move forward on that. You want to disagree without being disagreeable, right? So you can say hopefully that you have a different opinion without being nasty uh, or manipulative. And ultimately, if it's your boss's call, you are probably going to need to commit to a course of action, but shrink the timeline for running that experiment, right? So if you want me to follow up more with clients, and I feel like I'm already following up so much that I feel like a nudge, I don't want to wait three months for me to try it your way and then evaluate it. Could we check in after three weeks? So shrink the amount of time and then plan to have that follow-up conversation.